Eat a burger. You want eat and a burger. Put it to, you put it to uh, rest. Do it. So now we know. Daddy's at the law for until eight hours, and Daddy's watching XXX down in the fucking basement. Get that out of my face. <laughs> Will you punch the burger? I'm gonna throw it. Did you go to therapy? Yes. Yeah, we changed it. We're back up. Come on, Dude, you, got, you, got a lot, you got a lot of Bobby Knight in you. You got a lot of Bobby Knight in you. <laughs> We've seen him two places. All right, Wednesday, March 27th, Eve of the Sweet 16. We will get to that with a preview with John Fanta uh, for tomorrow. Touch on all the games. But first, I want to tell you about our friends at Dave & Buster's. The chance of getting a perfect bracket is 1 in 120.2 billion. So best of luck with that. For the rest of us, uh, instead of not watching edibles that are in the shape of nibbled ears, how the mighty have fallen. I don't know. Like this genius market. It is. I said it too. I go like it, it's, I don't think he's happy that this is where he's at, but anybody 25 to 50 walking across, how does it work? They sold in like stores. Well, now in New York, it's fully legal. Recreation. Yeah. So I mean, everywhere. So every block, if you're walking so. down the street or the, down the, the aisle, you would, those would jump out like, oh yeah, of course. Iron Mike, like the yeah. nibbled ears. Like it's the most famous woman's sports. I still remember. Is what Holyfield getting a cut? Because I imagine I don't know. I, I bet you he's mad about it. I did see a lot of people mad about it that, like, you know, Tyson's obviously had a decorated pass and we're, like, celebrating the guy. But interesting. This one, I'm going to need everybody's opinion back there on this one. I wrote this blog. J-Lo's go-to order at a bodega is a ham and cheese? That's no. Not, that's, that can't be it. Can't be it. Here's where I think would happen. She's. I'm not doubting she's a New Yorker. She's as New York as it gets. But I think you get rich, you forget. It's been a while since she's been in there. What is the gold, silver, and bronze of food at a bodega? I think it's chopped cheese, which I don't eat. No order. Chopped cheese, which I don't really eat. I've never had. It's a new type of thing. I still don't really see the appeal. But anyway, I know that's what it is. Chopped cheese, a bacon, egg, and cheese, and a Jamaican patty. Is that a pretty good three medals right there? Chopped cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese, and uh, Jamaican patty. I think like this is a classic... And I'm not like a, a city kid, but I always hear people saying like the classic city kid quick breakfast was like a buttered roll and uh, chocolate milk. So I, I don't know if Jamaican yeah. patty and yeah, buttered roll can go ahead and That head. jumps out there as well. But a ham and cheese is more of a deli type thing, yeah. especially in the suburbs. I think here's what happened. She, she f was on the she was under pressure when she got asked the question or misremembered. She hasn't been there for a long time. And she's like, uh, yeah, ham and cheese. Or she had a really good ham and cheese one time at the bodega. And that's what she went with. She also said an orange drink. She's like, if you know, you know. Like, it's one of those things. Like, nah, I don't really know. I don't know. It, I know orange drink. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Just like. It's legitimately what it is. It's just an orange drink at, the, like, the bodega. Okay. Is this in a, in a can or this is like they have a, a container in the back? I could have I could have been lied to, but mine was out of a glass. Okay. Like, the bodega that, like, I went to. Okay. Like, they, they were like, you should get this. Now, what was the, what's the gold medal standard at a, as far as drinks at a bodega? Because there's only one answer. I, it, that, I see. Like, I think, I think, I think you could be up there. I think Chocolate bodegas all changed bit, bodega to bodega. Do you but not it's agree? The it's the big, it's the big Arizona, Arizona. Arizona iced tea that's no longer 99 cents. I think it's wait, 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 wait. That's not true. It's, I think it depends where you go. Really? Yeah. I've seen it 129 a couple places. What are you saying, Jason? Uh, they sell them at different prices, but like Arizona tries really hard, like changing their production to keep them at 99 cents. They sell some for like more. Well, but, the bottle, the the plastic bottle is one twenty five. Yeah, but like but the big cans is still ninety nine. They'll always be ninety nine, from what I'm told. Their official statement on it is: if you see the can for more than ninety nine cents, you're being like scammed. That's awesome. So can you demand to the bodega owner? Yeah, no, that's awesome. Cents? That's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. The best. But yeah, you know, I don't doubt she's a New Yorker, but it was a weird. It was definitely a weird take. Also, when's the last time J Lo's been in a bodega? Really? That's what I said. Yeah, like she's eating at Catch and she's eating at Lugas and she's eating wherever the hell she wants. What's what's the what's the breakfast order like? What's the correct New York City or bacon just... egg and cheese? That's famous bacon egg and cheese, salt pepper ketchup. L let me. Okay. But I don't do salt pepper ketchup. I do let, salt pepper. 
let me ask you something. So I took the wrong. I was supposed to go downtown uh, to like the Lower East Side. I accidentally like nodded off on the train. Got a, got ended up getting out in Brooklyn. But I was like, I got need bacon, egg, and cheese. First time. Went to the first deli. Yeah, first time. Um, happens to me all the time. And there were a couple street youths in the bodega with me, and I ordered bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, hot sauce, and they're like. Ketchup and hot sauce, it's your life, whatever, fuck it, and just walked out. And I'm like, what the hell? Is that an abnormal thing to do, the ketchup and hot sauce? Bro, I think there's a movement. I think we touched on this, that mayo is now a movement. Fuck that. I, I think, it can't be. I, we, I think Chipotle I think, I mayo I wrote is. about this. I wrote about this. Some Chipotle, Chipotle, Chipotle mayo, mayo is. Not just a regular mayo. Regular mayo. mayo. Just regular, yeah, yeah, yeah. regular mayo is being put on something. I think it's bacon, egg, and cheese. So I think, I think, the, I think the correct order is... You, I, I mean, I think tech is the best. I think a Taylor ham, egg and cheese. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's, 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 it's a superior breakfast sandwich meat. Like, it is so fucking gas. Never had it. Not a You've fan. never had it? I don't, I don't know. I know and I don't. You, you, I know I don't no, like ham. I know I don't like it's ham. It's not ham. Everybody I don't like ham. That. No, I don't like ham. Whatever. Yeah? It's pork roll. It's like more like bacon. All right. It's like spam is what it is. No, it's uh, big I'm out on that. Spam. That's not <laughs> even close I went to, I went to There was rumors of a guy at the That's boys not even close of the, to what it is. Rumors of the guy at the firehouse. Luckily, he wasn't there when I was making, or he wasn't, didn't do it when I was there, but he made spam spam for everybody for a meal. I don't, like, spam is okay every once in a while, super salty, but like the, the propping up of Taylor Ham as if it's anything other than fucking big spam. Yeah. No, it's not, dude. Not, spam, it's is, spam is gross. I don't know. Taylor Ham is gross. Yes. Getting the weed. It's the best. It's the best breakfast sandwich meat that you can possibly really? get. Really? Sausage is still pretty good. Yeah, sausage. Chorizo is good. and egg on chorizo, egg and cheese. Dude, that Taylor ham bangs every once crazy. in a while. Taylor ham is Taylor spam. No. Thick cut bacon, pork belly. I would do a pork, pork belly bacon. Really good. Pork, good. pork, good. pork belly egg and cheese. What about oh, a brisket egg. You and also cheese? gotta throw a hash brown on it. That's a good idea too. Yeah. You never done that? Did you get a hash brown? I don't. Yeah, I don't mess just, with. Just, I should. No, yeah. Just, just add it next time. Yep. This is probably like I added it in high school. Changed my life. Yeah. It just like adds a little crunch layer. It is a little. You know, it, it, you have to get it when, when you're hungover and you put a fucking hash brown. And you slap yeah. a hash brown on that bacon egg and cheese. Oh my. I Lord. I feel like I should be going to a bagel instead of a roll too. I also do bacon egg and cheese a little bit of butter. Yeah. I like gone. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a gone. I have no problem with that. Uh, uh, there's one. I, did, I saw one, one more thing. It's like this place in Jersey does uh, scallion cream cheese with like okay. Mike's Hot Honey. I don't know about that. But in like a bacon egg cheese, it's called like a bee sting or something. Okay. Oh, is it O'Bagel and Hobo? Yeah. O'Bagel's fire. Yeah? O'Bagel's very, very good. I'll try that place out. Uh, Rich Diablo. And dude, did you load it up? Nikki C. <sighs> right from the get-go. Nikki. Nikki. How you doing? Sorry, What's up? You. Was on mute for a second. My fault. What's up? Hey, doing a couple quick things before when you guys touched on first. Mike Tyson, the, the weed stuff. Bosco, you're clearly, I love it. I love your You're a truthful guy. I don't think you've been a drug guy since 93 because no. you're talking like it's a, you're going to a Morton Williams. Yeah, I don't know how it works. I'll be honest. I don't know yeah, how it, it works. It's like going to fucking Morton Williams. You can't <laughs> pick it aisle by aisle, but I, I, you know, I respect the honesty there. Yep. And then two, best, uh, best breakfast sandwich, no doubt about it. Steak, egg, and cheese at McDonald's. Oh, it's we'll the goddamn a, best. We don't need to worry about going to fucking Have you guys had go. that? Oh, they put some sauce on there that's like Buge Fugazi oh, Hollandaise, dude. Throw a hash, throw a hash brown oh, in there. Oh, It's gross looking, but it's unbelievable. Steak, we love McDonald's. Egg, and cheese nice, but it's a gross nice looking yellow. Dude, they just chef chef brought it back, out. Jetski. It was unbelievable. I used to do, they used to do two for $5. I used to smash them. On the train Ooh. to when I was working with the Jets from Penn Station. And it was a McDonald's fight. Steak, the dude. minute I walked into the facility, it was like, I'm dropping a bomb. These things are unbelievable. You see They're the McDonald's so Krispy Kreme collab that's coming? Jets, you're a bacon, egg, and cheese. What? Ice cream collab? No, McDonald's and Krispy Kreme are yes. collabing. I don't know how, what They're going to put, like the yeah, collab. I don't know. It's that's always been the famous thing, the burger on the Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. Sorry for cutting you off. Right, I, ga I got a little game for you today, Bosco. All right. All right, name uh, four movie quotes. You can go four for four. Okay. I had press, all right? Here's the first one. Stop being such a... Ah, fuck. You know what? <laughs> Let me throw the game away. No, no, no. Keep, keep thought, going. You know, keep going. Keep I, going. No, you I can't mess with it. I played in my head. I thought the game was going to be good. You got three it's all right. words out. All right. First one. Stop being such a vagina, dude. I got to get a Red Bull before class. Uh, super bad. Bang. Second one. Lunch is canceled due to lack of hustle. Heavyweights. Bang. Take the locks as your cheap fucks. You know you can't afford it. And go home to your invisible wives. Take take the what? Lobsters. 
Take the lobster home, you cheap fuck. Ah, uh, I don't know that one. I don't know Maybe that one. Maybe on a boat. Maybe on a boat. Oh, 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 shit. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. There we go. Boom. Last one. I'm going to need a blow, uh, tweezers and a blowtorch. It's about to go medieval on your ass. Oh, shit. <gasps> tweezers and a blowtorch. I don't know that one. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one faded away. I don't think I would have got that one. I actually don't know who said this. Is, this is a good game, though, Nick. Keep coming, keep coming back if you can with, with more. Keep Different games. Game. Healthy debate. Can I, I win the game? Throw up a, I thought I mixed it up a little bit. I like that. The, uh, I like that. Instead of the gauntlet, you know. Yeah, exactly. You're uh, yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be in the mix in April if you're interested. Yeah, keep me in. Keep me on the fucking. All yeah, right. Keep me on the, uh, All right. Keep going, Just hey, behave yourself when you get free, out there. Whatever. Yeah, you're in. What's up? Just behave yourself when you're out there, but you're in. There's going to be some big dogs around. Of course I'll behave myself. Hey, of course I'll behave myself. <laughs> All right, I look forward to it. Hey, to be, to be in the presence of Rico Bosco will be an honor. I appreciate presence. it. Jetsky, I think you know All what right. the gig is. I think he can handle it. Yeah, you got it. Oh, It'll absolutely. Handle yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Handle it. Exactly. Fucking deliver. Put on a show, baby. All right, perfect. I'm a show. <laughs> All right, load him up. All right, last thing. Uh, Taylor Ham is not spam, Dukes. Okay, I'm I'll try it. I, know, I said it was I'll spam. I'll try it. it I'll try it. I'm not going to like it, but I'll try it. Dukes is riding. You yeah, will, you way will different than spam. All right, oh, talk I'm to you later. Picky later. No, very picky. Talk to you later, boys. All right, appreciate it. Do you want me to make it for you? Like, do you want me yeah, to make it? Yeah, I'll figure it out. Give me the next one. Oh, man, that cheer. Don't brush this off. We got Johnny Fanta coming up, by the way, previewing the Sweet Steve 16. Steve Long Island. Rico, you got me? Yeah, what's going on? All right, th this one's more so for Dukes, but healthy debate. I was in Chipotle the other day, and the hot sauce bottle was literally the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. If you take the hot sauce bottle from a Chipotle, you should be, like, medically evaluated. Who, took the, who took the hot sauce bottle? Dukes every does every time. Took the whole bottle. I took two last night. Uh, my dad used to – all right, you ready for this? Uh, this is kind of a dirtbag move. But when you're on the road and you got, like, a three-hour road trip, He'd go into McDonald's and be like, all right, get whatever you guys want. He'd walk to the table and take the salt and pepper shaker. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Okay. Dude, everyone, like, everyone acting like they're just My like, mother would get mad every time. Pull it out of his, pull it out of his pocket and be like, yeah. And he'd hit the bags with the fries. My like, mother would be like, you took it again? I like, put my cart back so that I could steal the hot sauce from Chipotle. All right. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't think everyone's perfect in their own way. Like, you're a little bit of a scumbag. Like, I grew up on Long Island. There's 1% scumbag in me. What do you think about... I think hot sauce. You guys ever go? Pepper. You guys ever go to? Uh... Wait, wait, can I time out on this really quick? Yeah. yeah. The hot sauce, like last night, like I steal it when they don't have the cups out for me. Got it. Like if I can't put my Tabasco in there, like you're asking me to steal. All right, it. yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You guys ever go to Jose Tejas? No, what's that? Mexican place in Jersey. No. By the mall, we'll have to do a what team. Long? Uh, Newport. Menlo. Oh no. We'll have to do a team meeting there one night. It's unbelievable. You fill up on the chips and salsa. Okay. That's half the problem. But they got the car. They got the carnita, salt and pepper. You know what I'm talking about? What? I'm just laughing at the chat. They're like, "What's fair about stealing?" Is it healthy uh, debate? Is, it, <laughs> is stealing okay if you put your cart back? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Tell us what like the Rumble you, Boys you, are saying. Can you steal from the grocery store if you put your, if you put no. your cart back? No. Well, I guess yeah. Healthy debate. What? Anyway, they got the carnita things, the salt and pepper. Those are always sick. Yeah. But I don't know ever how to get the shit back in there. I feel like you need a. I don't know how you ever fill it back up. I don't know. Because it doesn't look like the top comes off. But the Coronita things are sick. Anyway. Maybe you got to weld it or something. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Yeah, so what crime do you get to go away with if you return your card? I think I think, you I think steal, petty theft, yeah. You can like, steal one item under $20 from the grocery store if you return your card. Okay. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think you could do it at a grocery store. If, it's, if you self checkout, you can. If you self checkout, you can steal one item. Okay. For self checkout. All right. That's fair. Where else does that apply? Airport. What? You, what can you do on an airport? I'm afraid to see where this is I'm going. I'm saying you could steal at the airport self checkout. Oh. If you do what? You, can, you just can. There's, what if you no let someone go? What if you? What if there was a way to earn points <laughs> for stealing? For stealing. That would if be you a let fun someone act. go in front of you. If at a certain point in the drive thru you pay for somebody behind you. One good deed equals one petty theft. Yeah. I, that's that's a good that's a fair trade, because then you're just at you're at equilibrium. I don't want to say so much petty theft, you earn a freebie. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Like that company knows when you, you show you like you earn the freebie. Like if you buy if you're in the airport and you're buying like the pre made turkey club, right. it's gonna be fifteen dollars and then the Evian water bottle is seven, I'm stealing the Evian water bottle. I'll pay for the I'll pay for the turkey club, but I'm stealing the water. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dukes, loan them up. 
Bye, Steve. George Hoboken. Bosco, first time, long time. How are you? What's up? Yo, Bosco, I got a random question for you, and then I'll tell you why I'm asking. But okay. one of the best articles, or one of the best pieces Barstool has ever produced was written by you. It was the We Should Keep in Touch article. Yeah. I tried to find that article. I got a 502 error. Did that article get, did that blog get taken down? What happened to that? Uh, I that? don't, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I can tweet it right now. That was a, it was a good one. Yeah, it was good. That was a tough one. It was around my birthday. A very, very good friend of mine. Uh, let me find it right now for you, actually. Because I just looked well it up. I have... I have the URL saved, but I tried to pull it up. I organized an annual outing with my college buddies, which actually reminded me to do from the program on Monday when you guys were talking about COVID, whether the juniors or seniors got it worse. And from someone that was a junior and had their junior year ruined, I could tell you why we might have missed out on some things, man. Ten dudes in one house for six months straight. Some of those nights you just you, you wouldn't have had if it wasn't for the pandemic. And you I, honestly, yep. I wouldn't have treated it for the world. I'm definitely – team senior had it worse there but yeah i just wanted to know if it for some reason it got taken down or if i had the no, wrong URL, i think you had a, you had the wrong link it was in the best of 2023 which i was honored for uh i just tweeted it which makes no context of why it's being posted now but it's a good one it's a good read of all time like uh you know i i referenced the the scene in um saving private ryan which healthy debate people think that story sucks have you seen the movie yeah of course. yeah you know what i'm talking yeah. about when he tells the story about his brother's and he's got the ugly girl with her hands on her yeah, chest. Yeah. They almost burn it down. Does that story suck? No, I don't think so. But I think no. taking I don't think so of either. World War II movie, maybe. Maybe if you just heard that at like. Well, I've, I've heard like podcasts and everything. They're like, I think the story is supposed to be intentionally bad or like not that good. I didn't think it was that bad of a story. But the kicker of that is when he goes, that was it. That was the last night. And I think that no matter what, he could have told the most boring story in the world. Healthy debate. The point is, that's the last night he remembers seeing his brothers. Yeah. And the tough part is the longer you go and the more life you have, like, you forget sometimes the last time you may have seen somebody. Yeah. And that was the case with, with a guy like this, you know? So, um, chat saying Damon article. improvised Just that story. To find it. Scripted. What'd you say? Someone in the chat. Damon improvised that story. That, that story. Yeah, I mean, Damon's a beast. But, uh, yeah, man, it, organize them as much as you can because it's tough, dude. I, 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 I don't think I take it, like, personally. I think it's just people are crafted differently. But – there's a ton of people who haven't reached haven't reached out to me as well. There's a ton of people I send the text or you make the call, hey, you coming to this, you coming to that, you coming to that, and then the year you decide, all right, I can't make it, there's no word, nobody else. So I don't know if I was a true pain in the ass, but what I do know is of those years, I'm glad I had them rather than I didn't. So if people think like, oh, yeah, he's a pain in the ass or – whatever, I don't really care if I go back or I don't have any interest or whatever, I don't really have to stay in touch. That's fine. I'm always the stay in touch guy, and I do value those years when we were there laughing our asses off. So you know, at least you have something to look back on. Because the other thing would have been, yeah, I didn't see him till co I didn't see him since college. You know, and there's a bunch of those people too. But it's one um, of those things where it's like, I, I guess I'm uh, guilty of it. Like you see a bunch of buddies maybe going on a trip, and and you weren't invited on or something like that, and you're like, oh fuck these guys, I'm not gonna reach out. But it's like also on one hand, if you had reached out maybe to that guy and talked to him in a, uh, in a little bit, you reached out to him, you know, agreed a month prior, maybe you're you're back into yeah a, a more the other thing is there's, there's been there's been times where you don't know guys have the interest or you can only get a certain amount. You know what I mean? Like if we were playing a college basketball trip, there's a certain amount of my friends that would go. Whereas if we were going to a Jet game, there's different guys that yeah. way. You know what I mean? So, like, or local, Giants, whatever. Like, there's different ways people fall in, in thing, you know? So, find what works for your largest group of people. The largest, the biggest thing is just going around, going back to the school and going back up there for homecoming and drinking. Because, like, what is that? That's just a meetup. You know what I mean? You don't have to put pressure of, oh, I don't really play golf. I don't want to hold anybody up. I don't play cards. I don't really like sports. Like, just just go back to the college. Or – Figure something out where you all go out to dinner. Dinners, that, like, figure it out. But that's good you stay in touch, man. It's, uh, you know, it's a good one. I, I, I had a hard time writing that one, to be honest with you. But uh, Some of your best work. Appreciate you taking the call. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a good lesson. Before we tee up the next one, yeah. is it cool if I take a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll just touch on this. I think it's we're, – we're in a really, really tough spot now. As, uh, obviously, Officer Diller – Killed on a routine uh, traffic stop by guys who seem like lifelong criminals. Um, and the tough part is the answer now is going to be to, like, 
guys should come out to traffic stops with drawed guns. That's not fair because 95% of the world actually obeys it. Yep. You know what I mean? So, like, now we're in a bad spot where we're putting people unsafe there. And then what happens? Somebody gets nervous of that who's completely innocent, but I've been pulled over. You've been with nothing to do. You've been, you, you're nervous. So now we got people pulling guns on, like, elderly women, uh, whatever. Like, that's because guys are just acting out of place. The thing I wrote the other day, and I'll let Jetsky take it from here because he's obviously more in touch with it, but – they protect the city. The city doesn't protect them. And I think we're in a really, really tough spot with that. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy situation, and obviously condolences to Officer Diller and his family. And I just want to take the time to make us, you know, say something about it because it draws a lot of parallels to my life. Situation is almost exactly the same that uh, happened to my father 20 years ago. I've talked about it briefly, but um, in 2004, my father was a homicide detective in East Flatbush. Uh, him and his partner were killed in the line of duty. Um, it's kind of a similar situation. They were apprehending a perp in a car, career criminal, guy who was a scumbag, guy who stole his mother's car, uh, arrested on sexual assault, got out of jail after the sexual assault, beat the woman who he assaulted afterwards, a like, guy who should not have been out. Um, and they tried to get the guy out of the car. He was able to wrestle my dad's partner's gun away from him and shoot and kill my dad and his partner. And I say that to say it's eerily similar to the situation that's playing out or has played out with uh, Officer Diller. And it's, and it's crazy that this is the world that we live in but it's just facts right now that the city is, is not necessarily the safest place. And not everyone has the best interest of the population and police in, in mind. And this kid now, his one-year-old child, is going to grow up without a father. And, you know, I had my dad since Worse, I was— Worse, never met him. Worse, in yeah, fairness. In fairness. In, in, never met him. And I was just about to say that because I, I knew my dad for nine years, but— you had a little. Don't get me wrong. Yours is horrific. No, I don't want to compare. Horrific. Traumas, but never met. Never met him is even worse. And I feel like I'm crowdsourcing the memory of my father from other people's uh, stories from them. And, you know, I I don't really remember his voice. If I want to remember his voice, I put in a VHS tape, and that's how I hear it. And this kid's not going to have even any of that. So it's really important from my perspective to take care of the people who take care of us. And we have the shirt up on the site. Um, it's been selling and. It's obviously all the proceeds are going to go to Officer Doe's family, and Dave has graciously said that he's going to match whatever we sell. I urge you guys, please buy the shirt. Please donate. Um, my mom's very heavily involved in the uh, Patronus Benevolent Association and p concerns of police survivors, so it's something that is very important to me. And, you know, th uh, things like this and, and fundraising, and the whole reason I was able to go to college was because the NYPD helped my mom set up a trust where people could donate. So she could pay for my school, and they helped my mom pay off her mortgage. If that wasn't if that wasn't a thing, I wouldn't be here right now. I would have went to some stu SUNY school or community college. Like I, I wouldn't be here. And that's the type of thing that we need for this child, and he needs to be taken care of, and he needs to make sure that financially he has some cushion. And one way you can help is buying that shirt or donating. So please, if you have you know fifty dollars for the crew neck or twenty five dollars for the shirt, please buy the shirt. The money goes to a good cause. And it, it goes a long way because, you know, a scumbag, I don't even want to say killed, I want to say murdered, because these, these men were, this, this man was murdered. Um, and this man should, who, who, who pulled the trigger should not have been on the streets. And that's a bigger question, you know, for uh, the people who run this city. Why is someone who has 21 prior arrests out free? But that's a, you know, a conversation for the day. The, the important thing right now is to make sure you're supporting the people who protect us. Please buy the shirt. Please donate or show support in any way you can because it goes a long way and it, it really does make a difference. And I'm a you know living proof of it. I, I have a, an amazing life and an amazing job, and it, it is 100 percent because I was able to go to a good college that my mom and if my dad was alive wouldn't have been able to afford to send me to. So um, things like this really make a difference and are very very important. Yeah, and money's not the answer. 100 percent as well. It's not, but but just, what I will say is it doesn't make your life any worse. So, like, let's look at what those people are going through right now, and we're both getting, like, teared up as we're saying it. Imagine that. Imagine how grim that fucking living room is. Yeah. Imagine the fact that this woman is probably – or he's got a daughter. Is he married? Uh, yeah, he's married. How, how long could oh, he's he – he's a daughter, could, uh, not, not a son. My bad. How long could he have been married? He's, he's 31, so – Six, seven years. My point is, either way, they were barely married. Yeah. Their life was just starting. 31 yeah. years old, like, I was still basically 19. Like, my life was – you were still super young. And I know I'm, I'm not an old man now. I'm 36. But you look back and, like, your life has just started at 31 years old. Child. I can't imagine that. Losing, like, being taken away from that or what that child has to go through. 
Money doesn't make it any easier, but it doesn't make it any worse. Yeah. And you look across the glass at, at that, and he can tell you all about those things. So it's, and people always, that's the first thing, like, how do we raise money? Or, and it's, and it's, it's also again, being able it's to not make sure uh, that, his, you know, his wife now can just focus on right. raising this child and not have to worry about how am I going to make, you know, a nine to five job right. work while also or, raising Or, him. yeah, or just maybe this. Every time, oh, every time she's going to get sad of the sense that she's going to go, uh, have to go to work and, and drop the, the child off at a babysitter. Guess what? She doesn't have to drop it off at a babysitter. This, now this little girl has her mom around at all times. She's never missing a PTA meeting. She's never missing Girl Scouts. She's taking her every practice. Like That makes it a little bit easier, too. You know what I mean? 100%. So if she, if she doesn't have to work, that's, that's easy. And obviously, it's not like the guy, you know, the, the guy did anything wrong. It's a, it's a fucking traffic stop. The guy went to work. I always say that, too. Like, like, yeah, and he think went, of how many people go to work. And, and don't then, have to worry about not. Whether or not they're going to get or home. Or just being murdered. Yeah, exactly. And so. this guy did, went to work and he did the right thing and he didn't get to go home to right. his kids. And this scumbag is alive in fucking jail. Mind you, he had a, a, sh a shiv in his rectum knowing that he was probably going to get arrested. This is a scumbag and he should be under the fucking jail right now. That's a conversation for another day. But do what you can. Please buy a shirt. Buy two. Buy fucking ten. It'll go a long way. And, and money doesn't bring someone back, but it can definitely you know, help make sure that this child and, and this, this woman is, is taken care of and, and, you know, rest in peace, Officer Dale. And I think police is obviously a complicated topic because there are people who have a negative affiliation with police as well. The thing I'll say is every profession, every profession has good people and bad people. Yeah. I think it takes we a good... We live in a world of absolutes. No chance. I think it takes a good person to be one of the guys chasing down bad guys Think of this. Think of the detectives Detectives in a van chasing down one case. That is going to solve one problem. Now, yeah. some of them are, you know, the RICO Act, and that's brings down a, a collection. But for a large part of time, they're in a van, camped over, not sleeping, taking overtime, eyes watery, just want to go to bed, just want to lay down, drinking fucking coffee, eating shit that's not healthy for them, in a fucking van to take down, like, one guy. Yeah. That doesn't take – that's not, that's not a, a regular shithead, bad person ain't signing up for that job. Cops, cops do the right thing. Cops try to do the right thing. Cops try to take people who are murderers and can put harm into the society off the streets. Give them the benefit of the doubt. So, And I know people have, like, they're complicated. The thing I'll say is there are no absolutes. There's good podcasters. There's bad podcasters. There's good white people. There's good black people. It's a matter of or it, nothing being – there's good people and there's bad people. White people and black people have nothing to do with that sense. Yeah. None of it. None of it. So, I don't know. I think we got into a point a couple of years ago where people, like, wanted to have absolutes. Yeah. Like, all right, yeah, all these people are bad, all these people it's, are good. It's easier. And no, it's, a, it's, a it's not the case. It's a virtue signal. It's a lot, it's a lot hotter and, and more glamorizing for social media or whatever right. to have this – flagrant statement about everyone's this way or everyone's that and that's just not how the world is and what happens is people unfortunately go to work and don't come home and you got to make sure that they're taken care of a hundred percent a hundred percent and dave i give dave credit too like huge shout you know dave. <laughs> bump heads with dave on a lot of things uh but i asked him once i you know i think it was we raised money for something and i said do you have an affiliation with the police like was your uncle a policeman brother this cop i know he's only got a sister but cop, like w w usually the people who are pro police are like us they grew up around yeah this guy oh mr jones is uh is a sergeant used to drive me he coached the little league this guy's a fireman like we respect it around the suburbs around here and maybe that's the case a lot of people in certain areas don't grow up with that they don't grow up with the fact that police are just regular guys firemen are just regular guys but to dave's credit he has no affiliation with with law enforcement yeah. in his family he just does it because of the same thing. He sees guys protecting people on the streets, um, and they put their lives at risk every day. Every, every day, no matter what. So, you know, that's that. I know it got a little uh, – Shirt link's in the bio. Shirt link's in the bio. Obviously, go, go uh, honor him. And we'll be back in with the hockey and fire department game, which is always an awful – you know, people like those – you know, Whitney said too, he goes uh, – it's not Whitney's fault, but he's like – he, he goes, those pregame intros are – are like unbelievable. That's I go, right, yeah. yeah, but they're also awful because you get reminded of how many people we lost during the year. And he goes, you're right. So um, that'll be an emotional one in a couple of weeks. You know, just just when it wears off a little bit, 
you get reminded of that face. And, and, and they do a, they do a great job with 100%. that too. hundred percent. And like, uh, and not to keep going on about it, but there's a, a family. No, I um, think it's it's neat. There's things that need to be talked about. The, like we don't, you know, the two Azolo boys who are another line of duty survivors. They're big hockey guys, and uh, the Chicklets guys kind of had them out on the the ice with the um, the players, and and you know, kind of got really got them involved. They're big hockey players, so huge shout out to Chicklets guys for doing that again, and. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just I'm always very um, impressed and in awe of when we rally behind causes like this, especially ones that hit close to home. So if you know, I know the Stoolies always support. So if you can, please. And that's the biggest indictment of our fan base of just guys who get it. You know what yep. I mean? If we raise five thousand dollars of on shirts, that's that says something. But what we always do is is raise ridiculous amounts. Yep. You saw it with Timmy Klein. You're gonna see it with uh, or with Officer Diller. So, uh, Duke, do you have any lined up, or is that why we went to the? Uh, you got two. You got two? All right, we'll take two, and we'll go to Johnny Fanta. Nick Canada. Nick, sorry you got to follow that one. Hey. We got, but. <laughs> I, was, I was actually just about to say my, uh, my mom, obviously from Canada, my mom, her dad died at 13, a uh, firefighter. So it hits close to home, and jet ski, uh, I'm sure your dad would be super proud of you. So. Um, I appreciate that. Good night. Switch gears here. You guys are talking breakfast sandwiches. Uh, underrated Panera. <laughs> Hell of a transition. <laughs> what is I don't blame. I don't blame. Hey, I mean, no, that's we needed that. We needed that's that. how this show is gonna go. And that's and that's kind of what I envision. Like that, you know. But I appreciate everybody <laughs> calling in. But I even said it right from the get go. Like, it's a tough. It's a tough transition. All right. What does <laughs> what does Panera have going for him? Oh, what are you talking about? Have you ever had their bagels uh, and their eggs? W- the problem with bagels at places anywhere is that deli bagels are superior. You're absolutely jacked up, Rico. Oh, my God. I always agree with you, and you're just way off base. Guys, a corner deli Don't doesn't have better bagels than Panera? You want to help me out here, Dukes? Well, <laughs> Panera is just, oh, I mean, overpriced hospital food. If you want to, if you want, if you want to have, I mean, legitimately, if you want like a cheaper meal, just go, go in the ambulance. <laughs> Get a one night. I mean, a corner hospital. corner what bagels is, are unbelievable. Hey, hey, these are the guys that are stroking fucking McDonald's sandwiches. You can't yeah. enjoy a Panera sandwich. You I'll try it out. Like tell me, tell me the exact order. I'll try it out. All right, so you got, you got a Asiago bagel. Okay. Posted. With an egg, obviously, and bacon, okay. and, they, and then you go to Starbucks and pick up sriracha sauce. Electric. I gotta go to two. Pl- I gotta go to two places, or just put sriracha on it. All I right, thought you fine. were inept. All Your right. legs broke. I am inept. Yeah, I am inept. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the other thing I was I, I was calling the humble brag here. Um, I did my um, bracket for okay. ESPN on their app. Uh, after the round of 64, I was 197th in the world. That's pretty good. Man. It Humble is a brag. chalky, it is a chalky year, but that's pretty good. I think yeah. the real question now so, is anyway. how many of the elite eight do you have left? If you have six or seven, you're in a great spot. I got, uh, well, I don't know my elite eight. I know my starting four is still four. Okay, so that's where you so, want to be. Yeah, right. So I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. Anyways, 99.4, not a big deal. You guys wish you could be this good. Talk to you later. All right, yeah, we'll have you fill out next year. So I don't care. I'll take I'll take the credit. Dukes, give me the last one. Moisty turtle. Oh. Moisty. Only week. Yo, only week. Rico, <laughs> yeah, what's, what's up, up? Boss? Hey, I just want to give a shout out to Nick from Canada. That I good transition, boss. I don't know what I was. Yeah. I I thought I was going to be up next, so I had no idea. Um, but my healthy debate today is, and I hadn't gone by Moisty Turtle. I'm hoping the OGs will remember it for uh, the time being, but I started my first real job about three weeks ago and um, Congrats, I just brother. graduated. I, thanks bro. I appreciate it. I, that uh, on the COVID thing, I, uh, I had to take an extra semester in the fall because Ugh. COVID happened and I didn't do any work in the spring. I just worked at FedEx <laughs> and saved up money and paid off student loans. So I'm surprised you didn't pass. Like I'm surprised you didn't pass with COVID though. That feels like they, they no, couldn't no, have it failed. Wasn't that I didn't. Oh, okay. It wasn't that I didn't pass. It was that I finished out that freshman year, like, spring, and then fall came around, and it was, like, all online. I was like, this is fucking – this. yeah, I was like, this is dumb. So, I uh, I just took it off and worked at FedEx. But, yeah, that kind of sucked, just bringing up the COVID thing. But my healthy debate is what is the worst part about starting a new job? Mine would be possibly just, like, 
the small talk, uh, like trying to keep yourself guarded, I guess, like choosing and picking your words. Cause I'm a pretty like open and like talkative guy. So it's been like weird, like trying to figure out like what people I can trust or like talk more openly with, I guess. Like that's All my right. healthy debate. I got a few, that's I got a few. That's a good one. That's a good one. You guys chime, yeah. in, chime in as you think. All right. One, the small talk for sure. Out of order, uh, the small talk. Yep. Two, mm. navigating how you can take days off of shit you already have planned. Yep. So, like, for me, this kid started three weeks ago. Let's say he started at the end of February. How do I get off the first two days of the tournament? Non-negotiable. <laughs> you got a wedding at the end of April. You got to take a Friday. You're supposed to go play golf with your buddies. Navigating the days off early because technically you haven't accrued them. Uh, getting roped into the work events everybody's like oh you know we got a first thursday here we always go out thursday we do the sales goals and then we go out for drinks it's like i don't like going i like going out with one guy from work i don't like the teamwork thing where there's a hundred people out you know what i mean initial paperwork when yeah. you're first getting hired initial paperwork uh yeah like the sexual harassment training all those videos where you're just like let me just i want to go do my job I'm trying to think of what else one thing that was in, in the OG office in uh, HQ1, one thing for me was, like, there was two bathrooms and, on, on that one floor, and it was figuring out where you're going to do. So I would just go to, like, a Starbucks a lot of times because I yeah. would try to blow up the bathroom, like, where everyone was seeing. I think, yeah, in. wondering when you're going to flirt or, like, mm -hmm. how it works, like, trying to navigate the stream just of, like, hey, do people, do, people date, do people date here? Like, do people date here? Like, or what's her – you know what I mean? So – yeah, that's a good one. I'm taking some notes here, man. Sorry if I'm like, or, in my yeah. pencil scribbling. We're, we're trying to read your boss, too, is a little difficult, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think one thing. But the, the stuff, when I, it's doing the extra shit. I always hated the happy hours. Like, I hated those. Hated those. I think figuring out how to advocate for yourself. This is like kind of like a real yeah. thing. It's like I never really knew about that, that you could, like, you know, advocate for a new title or – better pay i thought it was like you know the first four years i was here was like this is your raise this is your raise or no raise like this is what you're getting i'm like okay and then my mother finally sat me down and was like you need to be able to stand up for yourself and i was like oh okay so i think that's a, a tough thing to navigate is to be able to i don't know stand up for yourself or uh, advocate for what you want or where you want to be and if anyone's trying to do that good tip is in a day keep a log of hour by hour what you're doing at your job and that's a good thing to be able to bring to your boss or manager if you ever do something like that yeah I also heard yeah. we did a thing with sales. The guy used to keep a journal of when things would get busy because it was a year over year business. So booking the yeah. trucks, he would say, like, this is how much we paid this year. So you can, like, forecast different things. But, yeah, man, it's it's getting roped into the bullshit. That's always the tough part. Like, yeah, yeah, we're that's, going. We're that's, going. Kind of, that's kind of why I called is because I'm similar to you, Rico. I like going out with, like, one or two of my buddies right. and watching a game or something. I'm not a big happy hour guy. Yeah, so. I think the, the last piece of advice I'll give is try to put in as much as you can early. This way, when you do need to, like, dip out a little bit early or you need coverage or if there's things where people are like, hey, I need help with this after hours, like, don't be the 9 to 5 guy right away. It sucks. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's days where you're sitting there at 415 and you're like, I ain't going to make it. I ain't going to make it. But, like, stay a little bit later. Don't just write at 5 o'clock, like, bail out, help people out, and then you'll see how it comes back to you. Some of the chats are setting boundaries. That's uh, probably a good idea. Yeah. Don't just say yeah. And Because in the beginning, when you first get to a new job, yeah. you want to say yes to everything, but then people are going to be like, oh, we're, this is the guy that we can give all our fucking Right, right, to. right, right. That works, too. Yeah. So That's a really that's a really good addition there at the end, JT. I'm going to keep that in mind because it, it kind of is like – do it's kind of like what Rico said, doing that extra mile, like going the extra mile and like being attended, like attention to detail and shit like that. And also, like, not being that type of guy, like you just said. You so know, I'm kind of like I said, the I extra mile for the right people. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, that's that's a better way to put it. For yeah. sure. So uh, yeah. all right, appreciate all right, appreciate it, it. appreciate it, week. Moisty Turtle. Everybody, go buy a Sweet. shirt. Uh, coming up right now, we're gonna preview the Sweet 16 with Johnny Fanta and wrap out the show. Um, check you out on Monday. <laughs>
All right, on the eve of the Sweet 16, who better than friends of the program, uh, John Fanta, live in Boston for the, uh, for the East Regional. Uh, mm -hmm. John, let's go right into it. What is the matchup you're most excited for? Man, that's such a great question because there's, there's so many to choose from. Uh, I would say Tennessee Creighton, to me, is going to be fascinating. Because you get Dalton Connect and Baylor Shireman on the on the same floor. You get elite bucket getters in that game. How does Tennessee respond from not a particularly good offensive performance against Texas? Is this the same old Rick Barnes? You know, meanwhile, uh, Creighton's coming off an amazing double overtime win. So, so that would be one. I mean, from a pure basketball standpoint, it's Alabama, North Carolina. Like, if you if you want to watch a game that's going to resemble the closest thing to what the pros do from a style standpoint, not saying talent standpoint, I'm saying from a style standpoint, the offense in that game is going to be exhilarating. R.J. Davis and Mark Sears are All-Americans, and they're consensus All-Americans, and they have had a fantastic season, the two of them. So I can't wait to see what's in store in that game, but that's what makes this Sweet 16 great. I mean, you just asked me for my favorite matchup, and here in Boston – we have the number one offense in the country versus the number one defense in the country. And I didn't even say that to you in yeah. Illinois, Iowa state. So I'm, I'm pumped, man. Yeah. I think that was the thing I, you know, I, I wrote that down too. like grade. Give me a grade on the first weekend. I don't think it matters because like we're me and you were always going to say it's an a, but trust tree. It was probably a C plus, but yeah. that leads us to a phenomenal sweet 16, 14 of the top or aside from Auburn, I think 13 of the top 14 in Ken Palm are all in the sweet 16. That doesn't happen. So, we, like, this is a loaded, loaded type of matchup, and then we'll get to why I think that can even benefit next weekend. Um, you know, so we're in, a, we're in a loaded spot. You touched on Creighton, Tennessee. We'll go through all the matchups here. It's interesting because in your head, you think Creighton wants to get out and run, whereas in, in actuality, they're a 227 in tempo. They're a little more methodical than we think. Tennessee is actually the team. Mm -hmm. Tennessee is the team that wants to get out and run, but you touched on uh, Rick Barnes. Do you trust... Rick Barnes. I actually uh, I, I had the opportunity to meet Alan Houston a couple of weeks ago and uh, and said to him, hey, do you think Dalton Connect is so good he can overcome Rick Barnes? And he kind of looked at me kind of cross-eyed like, that's a hell of a way to say it. But Rick Barnes has struggled in the tournament. So is Dalton Connect enough to overcome Rick Barnes' struggles here? Well, you would think. I mean, uh, it, he is the second best player in the sport, in my opinion, this season, if Zach Eady, we should have just given out an Eady award on November 6th. Right. And then played out a, a national player of the year race separately uh, because Zach deserves it. He's been a generationally dominant college player. But for me, the reason why I think that can, here's the thing, Rico, if not now, then when for Rick Barnes, he's not getting any younger. How many more chances is he going to have to have this type of a team? He's got an outstanding bucket getter, a Jimmer Fredette, Doug McDermott-like scorer who can string together buckets. Here's, here's the mark of a great score. When they have a bad night, they're still pretty doggone good. And I didn't Connect did not shoot the ball well at all against Texas no, and had, had a bad night. But we hit the under four timeout, and this kid hits two huge shots down the stretch in the game. So you come up big for your team. Santiago Vescovi, Zakai Ziegler. Uh, Adu on the interior. Like, this team has a well-rounded nature to it, and you're right. Tempo's going to be really, really important. That's why, for me, the most important player in the game between Creighton and Tennessee is Stephen Ashworth, because it's going to be on the Utah State transfer to manage that game. If he does not, and Creighton's having trouble running their stuff, then I think it's going to be a long night, potentially, for them, and Tennessee will win this game. If not now for Tennessee, then when? You get Creighton right. and and then you potentially could get Zach Eady. I know Eady's tough, but Tennessee knows Purdue. They already played him in Maui. They can get him. Yeah. No, I think it's, uh, it is it is the time where he could get him. You know, you touch on Ashworth. That was funny. Actually got a DM from his sister. I think the gambling brain took over a little bit. Was, calling him, was calling him Stevie Gutless throughout the broadcast, uh, you know, in the cave. But he is a hell of a player, and I've issued my apologies. He's got, he's got stones as they say. So apologies to the Ashworth family. I do, uh, I do like them playing, but they're down against Oregon. You need them to hit it, you know. So we needed some points, and, uh, and shout out to Creighton. So, and they do score a lot, as slow as they play. So I think that game is going to be pretty much a track meet. Let's go east. Uh, San Diego State shoots 31.8% from three. Not great. So you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're scouting that game. All right, let's go inside. 
UConn's got Klingon and Caravan. What do they do? Like, what do they do? What's the upset for everybody for anybody to take down UConn? Now, San Diego State forever, people, you know, last year too, especially was like, oh, horrible Mountain West, horrible. They're right there in that championship game. Made a little bit of a run. I think UConn kind of handled that game start to finish, but they belonged on the floor with UConn. It wasn't like the UNLV Duke 30-point blowout. They didn't get run out of the building. Um, but what can they do in this to stop this inevitable uh, repeat, which everybody thinks is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, pull a, a Jordan and Utah and and deliver some bad pizza or something, some bad yeah. Boston pizza or bad chowder to the hotel tonight. I don't know. I mean, for me, here's the deal. To, to be – it's interesting. San Diego State shot 13 for 27 from three against Yale. Right. That's the best shooting performance they've had this season. They're not gonna. They're not gonna do that two games in a row. But but to that end, if you're gonna have any chance against Connecticut, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to negate the three point line. So you have to say, you know what? We will sacrifice Caravan or Newton getting an easy layup or Klingon with a dunk if it means that Spencer and Caravan aren't coming off screens and hitting open threes. The moment that Cam Spencer hits a three, it feels like four or five points. It doesn't feel like a normal three because he's just so intense and so competitive and so tough. He, it's like Dan Hurley had a kid in the offseason, and it was Cam Spencer. Yep. You know, they just – he fits them like a glove. The other thing you got to do is you have got to – you you cannot make mistakes – you're going to need your A to A plus game. Um, a for the elite teams, for the teams remaining, A gives you a chance. But they've won eight straight tournament games. Yeah. By, and it pro- by it, it, 13 plus points. It probably helps them that they saw them last year. And again, like they're in there. Now, I don't know if it's going to matter, but they're in the locker room going, we can play with these guys. We can play with these guys. You know what I mean? Maybe, but they're, what's going to have to happen is they can't have. Lamont Butler just be in single digits. He's got to give them a big game. Darian Trammell's got to give them a big game. And Micah Parrish has to as well. We have yet to see an opposing team's backcourt really, really put the pressure on Tristan Newton. Can anybody rattle Tristan Newton? Can anybody rattle Tristan Newton? Maybe a pro. Maybe a pro. It's a good point. Uh, all right, Illinois, Iowa State. So Illinois' defense is 92nd on the year and 191st yeah. since February 15th. Iowa State offense, 49th on the year, 75th since February of 15th. Two things trend in the wrong way uh, on different sides of the ball, two different styles of play here. Which one do you trust to not suck as much as it has been? Illinois' defense or Iowa State's offense? Because both have not been up to par compared to what they want to do. Well, I trust Iowa State's offense because it's the tournament. Yep. And I just trust an offense more for a team that's as elite as they are because you know this, when you're playing with some confidence and you're advancing in the tournament, there are some shots that go in for your team that haven't gone in all season. That's real. Yep. It's it, There are shots that go in for some of these teams right now that you're like, where was that all year? You know, exactly. look, look at uh, NC State. Mohamed Diara, if you look at his season numbers, the, the guy the guy has scored, I think, 20 uh, or more in his last – three of his last four games. He's had huge games, three of his best scoring performances. He only did that like twice the whole season. So, for me – And then you know what's worse off of that, too? There's sometimes where a guy is like, when am I going to get one? I think Corey Kispert's still waiting for one to drop in that tournament. He right. did not have a good shot. You know what I mean? Like, some of the best shooters just go cold. So, it's a cruel, cruel type of run. Right. So, I trust – I trust Iowa State offensively more than I more than I do on the other side because, like, I, oh, by the way, DR it wasn't twenty point performances. It was uh, it's four double figure performances. Okay, it's la- in his last five games. Yeah, but he's he been had phenomenal. Five double, he had he had five double figure performances the entire season before that. Exactly. Still, you, you never know this time of year. Here's why, though, I trust Iowa State's offense more because Taman Lipsy. And Keyshawn Gilbert are in a rhythm. And Milan Momsilovich, the, the freshman, has been terrific here as the season's gone on. It can cause a matchup problem against Illinois. I, I, Illinois has not guarded all year. What, what's going to make me think that they're going to start doing it now? It's part of their identity. It's just who they are. 
it can get you tournament wins because they score, score, score. And their best defense is actually their offense. That's the thing with Illinois. And we haven't seen them be tested yet. They beat Moorhead State, who I liked. A little bit of a test in the first half, but there's a talent gap there. And then they get to Kane as the 11. Right. That Now, um, I will never apologize for a team making this. Never. Team. Never. Now, I'm not saying you – well, I mean, what did you make of that over the weekend? Like, why Why do we have people that cover this sport who are like, well, they should be there? Right. I think both can be true. Like, you can say it's an easy road. Uh or you, I'm, I'm sorry, you don't apologize for it, but no. you could. You, when you look at it, you do go, "Hey, they got a good yeah. draw." So Illinois yeah, fans should be like, negative. Of don't course, be negative. Don't be negative against the program. They don't control who they play. Right. Yeah, I don't think you should I try to tear. You, you shouldn't tear them down for a Sweet Sixteen appearance. Oh, but you should also <laughs> take it with a grain of salt again that they haven't been tested. Like both of those are true. I think Illinois would tell you, "Yeah, those are good teams, but uh, this is a step up. They know what the deal is." Yeah, and this will be, and and I'm really torn on that game. Like, I don't have a firm lean either way. No, it's going to be a good one. I, would say. I feel like a lot of people are picking Illinois to win. Yeah, there's a lot of sides I don't really love. I think I'm more of a watcher this time, um, you know, with, with this. Uh, speaking of ones where I am a fan, obviously you see the getup. Uh, Mo Diabate has improved, but he's definitely frustrating this year. Like, a lot of fouls, stupid fouls, he's still young, like, not getting it. He's improved. Has he improved enough to stop Baycott? Because he's really, really good. No, probably not. Um, You know, I I just think, I think that that's where, that's my concern with this matchup for Alabama. But, but, here's the positive for Alabama. North Carolina did not start well against Michigan State. Michigan State did not make them pay for that. Michigan State could have gone up by 15, 17 points. That's how bad Carolina was through 12 minutes. If you're that bad against Alabama, good luck. Yep. You're going to be playing, you're gonna be playing the comeback trail the whole game because they will get a lead and they will build on it. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you. I just think that defensively here, this is where your concerns about Alabama arise because of Carolina's pace, Carolina's ability to get open looks, and – Rico, the level that Harrison Ingram is playing on right He's now. He's unbelievable. He has been unbelievable for this basketball team. Yeah, plus you could be down Reitzel. I don't know if he's playing. I'm trying to hit the different birdies. I'm sure you got the same. I, nobody knows if he's going to play. Him going down, that changed the game. So no, And here's the other thing. Aaron Estrada can't be going up four for 14. No, and he has not been exceptional this year like this year I think he's he's great and there's moments of great but it always seems like there's a little bit of that dip you know I what thought happened him, to Grant Nelson is it just uh, that I still level? think he's fine but he's got overall but yeah he's he's trending the wrong way I, I'll, I'll say that um but they got guys who can step up like I'm a big Sam Walters guy I think his moment can come Cosby I know he's out but he had a moment I think there's yep. some guys getting some confidence it's a true like Step up type moment. The one thing I will say that it uh, is is a good spot for Alabama. Having watched this team even back to the days of JD Davison, it felt like there was a lot of turnovers when you play fast. You know, because you you can you can afford a turnover when you're going to get three possessions in what people get in a normal one. They play so fast. Carolina's 310th in forcing turnovers, um, so they just don't. They're really really bad. I think Bama, if they don't turn it over, that helps them as well. I'm, I think we get a true track meet here. Ken Palm's got it decided by two points. Uh, I'm hoping it's a classic, and obviously Nate breaks through. But Carolina's a, a worthy opponent um, and really, really good. Mm-hmm. No, I, think no there's, I think there's always one blowout. Is Clemson, Arizona the blowout? Because uh, Arizona's yeah. tough to figure out. When they look yeah, good, they look good. They've, they've looked bad. Clemson's playing great. P.J. Hole, Gerard can right. sling it. What do you make of this? I'm, I'm kind of least interested in this one. Uh, I think Clemson's going to cover. I do. Okay. I, th- I, I, I think that... Here's why. Experience and balance. And I think Brad Brownell's going to say, you know what, we're going to play this game in the half court. That's the key in the game. The key in the game, and and Mick Cronin did a spot um, earlier this week um, on the herd, uh, and I, I heard it, and he was he was awesome. And he, he was pretty candid, and he said, look, Mick does not care. He, he doesn't give a damn. He just goes, if you're going to beat Arizona – you have to get them frazzled in the half court. You ha- you cannot get into a trap meet 
Well, Clemson, Rico, Clemson has players yep. who can settle the game down. Chase Hunter's playing out of his mind right now. Joe Girard is a shot maker. P.J. Hall's a guy like he's kind of an old man playing a, a college game, but he plays it really well. Uh, Ian Shifflin, like that guy, that guy's a really good player. For me, that's the key. And the other question is, what version of Kylan Boswell are we going to see? Because if Kai Boswell doesn't show up, Rico, you're, you you already got Jaden Bradley bailing you out once. Okay? He was great. But that's not every game. No. So they better get they better get more out of Boswell. If they don't, Clemson's covering the spread. I think everybody thinks this is going to be a blowout. If you think it's going to be a blowout, you didn't watch Clemson beat Baylor. No, Clemson, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm up on Clemson. And it makes sense. I mean, they were ranked for earlier in the year. The other thing I'll say off of that, too, you make a good point, frazzle them in the offense. You know what the big difference between the NBA and college is? Obviously, from the, the shot making, you could say a million of those things. But it always seems that, like, eight, nine seconds on a shot clock or, or you know, a six or seven on a shot clock in the NBA, somebody knows how to run something and can still get a good shot. If it's six or seven in college, it's a it's hot potato. Like it's a, it seems like a freak fest. And if they Clemson keeps forcing that shot clock down, and forcing Arizona to take some shots under pressure, or not even take a shot or a shot clock, and you know Tommy Lloyd wants to go nuts, like that's where you're right. You can really really screw up a team, and it doesn't look like teams even run anything at six or seven seconds. So, you know, you're eliminating another element to that. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, you're you're in a situation here where. Arizona, some of those slip-ups in the Pac-12, they're not just slip-ups. They were revealing about how they play. And Clemson reminds me of Washington State. Washington State has had a bunch of success, three wins over Arizona the last two years. It's not a foregone conclusion here that, that Arizona just rolls to a blowout. I think I think UConn should roll. Um, but the other three games, like I expect them to be on Thursday – I expect them to be very, very competitive. And then I think really the only the only slot that I would say, you know, heading into Friday that that could get could could turn into a commanding win one way or the other is is if is if NC State's magical run finally comes to a close and you know we see Marquette Marquette play their game. Yeah, that's another one I'm not as as interested in. So just give me one key. What's NC State do to pull that upset? It seems like I like Burns, and he's burned me with Texas Tech. I, I went against them there. Uh, but it's, it seems like he just has the spin move. And I know that's, like, lazy to say because he is yeah. crafty and he's got the footwork. But, man, he spins a lot, John. That's, he spins all the time. Yes, and one of Marquette's strengths, if you watch Marquette play Colorado, when players got cued in the lane, Marquette's hands are active and ready to strip the ball. Yep. They, they, they're good with that. They're yep. very good with that. Uh, this is not as like in the past. I thought Marquette's been a bit soft. For the first time, I actually believe that they're not. Like they 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 have a toughness. They have a backbone. Uh, are they the best team? No. Um, you know they're not. They're they're. I don't even think you know. I I have them eleventh in my Sweet Sixteen power rankings. Um, that I did, and 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 that's because of the fact that like, I just think that they're so reliant on Kolick and Cam Jones that it's hard if one of them has an off game for them to be able to win against this type of competition. Now, Kolick's been terrific. I mean, he's come up with his injury. He's been unbelievable. Two games, what, 38, 39 points, 22 assists. Fantastic. Cam Jones has been a bucket. He can't disappear. He's just got to keep shooting. Keep shooting, man. Yep. Um, the problem with the matchup is DJ Burns has to get Oso Godar on some foul trouble. Because if he doesn't, Iguodaro's going to run all over him. He, he, Iguodaro runs circles around big men. He will he will make Burns' life hell in the pick and roll. Yeah. Uh, two really big ones that I like, I think both Friday night. Um, yeah, Friday night. Uh, Houston, Duke. I'll give you this stat. So I know Duke shot the ball great. I don't know if they're going to repeat that. The thing I looked into, and this is why I loved Houston in the first half and in the game in that first round matchup in the NCAA after getting um, their tits lit, to use a better term, uh, in that Big 12 championship game. Houston, off of a loss, 3-1 and one straight up. Their only loss was at TCU. Their average winning margin is 26. Mm. Off of a game decided by less than 10 points, one way or the other. They're 11-2. and two. Their wins in those 11 games are by an average of 18.8 
points a game. I think Kelvin Sampson, Kelvin Sampson is one of those guys who gets in his guy's ass. Uh, and he's going he's gonna to light this team up. I think, I think Sampson's all over them. I love the fact that Duke is shooting. I like their guards, but I don't see it repeating again. And I think, uh, I think Houston is the play here. It's my favorite only real side of the tournament. Wow. Um, look, I've got Houston in my final four. So if they win, that's, that's, you know, that's good. But I I just would say, I agree with you on, on the whole concept of can do keep this up against a team as tough as Houston. We'll see. The only problem I have with Houston, it's not how hard they play. I think Kelvin Sampson's always into his teams, but you're right, especially off of games like the one over AM. You know, you got to get lucky a little bit. You got to get fortunate a little bit along the way. Now, they actually caught some misfortune when that shot goes in for Texas AM to force overtime, but like right. they still found a way to win. And there are moments you remember sometimes if you make a run. The one concern I have is what happens if Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Emmanuel Sharp, what happens if one of those guys is having a bad game? But nor alone too. Like they they are very reliant on those three perimeter guys. They don't have a great scoring front court and they don't have a bench. So that's the only concern I have when you look at it and like Duke, Duke should have the best front court player in this game, Rico. This is a game where Kyle Filipowski should show his worth. Or is he gonna soften up? But I I like the side of Houston. Uh, your argument is totally valid. I'm just saying, like, if you're John Shire and Duke and you get blown out, I'm sorry, but you will have gone to the first two years. I know you made a Sweet 16, but at Duke, aren't the expectations higher? I think this is a huge game for Shire. Yes. It's a big one, especially after last year. They got out tough. Now he's getting a reputation of Tennessee out toughed you, Houston out toughed you. Granted, he got to a Sweet 16, but when it matters and the, and it, the things on the line, you're getting out tough. Uh, the last one, the most fascinating one to me. Purdue Gonzaga, a Maui rematch. I know it wasn't in Maui, it's in Hawaii. Uh, Purdue wins by 10. I think EK is improved. Now, I had some egg on my face because all day Saturday, I kept saying, uh, watch out for Osibor. Osibor can get into Edie. Osibor can get into Edie. That was child's play. Edie, Edie ate him alive. Now, there were a lot of fouls called. I think even Sprinkle went into it and said, you know what, we probably fouled him. He did not complain about the refs. But there were a lot of calls in that game that stopped the flow, stopped guys getting going. Can Graham E.K., who I loved at Wyoming, stop Edie, especially after having some film because this Gonzaga team is improved? Or yes. is, th- is this another national player of the year two times in a row against a Mountain West guy, and what are you doing betting on the Mountain West guy? Yeah, you, you got to go Purdue. You know, Gonzaga beat a McNeese team that we all got fleeced on. Uh, and then Kansas is so banged up. And they were horrendous defensively. I mean. So you they, think blowout? Do you think this one's close? No, I think Gonzaga hangs in. Okay. But I, I wouldn't pick it. I wouldn't pick Gonzaga. I, if I had to pick, I'd pick Purdue. Just because I, I just think that that Purdue's going to get their availability of open threes. And as here's the thing. If Ryan Nemhard controls the game, Gonzaga will have a chance. Right. One thing you know about Nemhard, he's a winning player. Like yeah. his the teams he's on win. Um, I, and I got think Hick, Hick, Hickman's been phenomenal too. They need Braden Huff. Gonzaga yep. needs Braden Huff to hit a couple of shots. He has made a difference for them in these first couple tournament games just by hitting a three. To beat Edie, you got to make him come out. You got to pick and pop. You cannot. You're not going to beat him inside. No, he can't. He's, he can't sit down there. He was catching the ball. He's catching the ball above his head. Yeah, eat it's, your lunch. You're a no, dead man. Lunch. I like dead Purdue. Man. Yeah. I, I'm just, I do think Gonzaga can, I feel like I wrote a blog that Gonzaga could potentially miss the tournament and who cares right. because Gonzaga's better when they're the front runner or, which will never happen again, the complete underdog of like an 11 seed back in 99. When they're in the mix of this five seed, it's kind of like, who cares? But maybe that's when they're at their best. I thought now well, they I'm can. Well, I'm going to pick, i tell you this much. As long as Mark Fuse the coach, I'll be picking them to make the Sweet 16 every year. Yeah, it's on. It's unbelievable what he's done. Uh, who's your final four? UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Tennessee was my original final four, so I'm not going to so back I'm sticking off. with it. Yeah, I'm so that's the, that's the last question I had. I, I said I'd hint on it before. 
I think we're guaranteed, aside from miracles, we're guaranteed a like blockbuster type Final Four when you look, maybe not the oh, name right. brands, but of, for, for history, but the ones who've been at the top of this game all the way through. So out in the Midwest, Purdue, Gonzaga, Creighton, and Tennessee. You can't miss there. In the West, Carolina, Alabama, Clemson, and Arizona. Aside from Clemson, you kind of can't miss out there as can't well. Miss. These teams can't miss. East, UConn, who we think it's going to be. If it's San Diego State, it's not as great, but they'd be potentially, you know, two Final Fours. That's a good story. Illinois and Iowa State, top of the league all the way through, top of the country all the way through. Houston, Duke, NC State, Marquette. Aside from NC State, you kind of can't miss there. Like, no. I think I think we're loaded for next week. Loaded. W- one way or the get, other. If you get UConn, Carolina, Duke, Purdue, the world's going to break. Oh, yeah, it will. It I mean, will. that would break. But but UConn, Arizona, the world's going to break because Arizona, it'll be a home game. Yeah, and and Danny will have another thing to say. I can't believe they put the Final Four in Phoenix. It's like, yes. Danny, yeah. they booked it eight years ago. Like, I love so that, that though. Great. That would I be love great. that. He's acting like they just, you know, they went, they found, it's like uh, Friday Night Lights when they try to find the football field <laughs> for the state championship. Out Everybody's out to get him. I love yeah. it. John, I know you got to go. You got press conferences and different stuff like that. So, uh Enjoy it. I'll see you in Phoenix. And it's it's been a great year. We said it was wide open, you know, but credit to the top teams, maybe. They're doing so far. They're doing what they're supposed to to maybe keep this a, a chalky thing. And and that's not the worst thing in the world when you look at how, how these teams have played and how many talented guys we're going to have on the floor. So I'm excited for it to fold to uh, to unfold. Tomorrow night's one of my favorite favorite nights of the year. Thursday in Sweet 16 is unbelievable. Unbelievable bar night. Top Love five this bar tournament. Night of the year. Love this tournament. Can't wait. You know, it's a it's a opposite from what we had last year with the randomness of FAU, Miami, and San Diego State, and even UConn, who wasn't ranked in the preseason top twenty five. You can't go trends in this sport. That's what makes it so great. You can't be like, oh, is this how it's going to be every year? No, every year is different. Every tournament's different. This tournament rules. It's the best event in sports. To anybody who wants to change it, back off. <laughs> Get lost. Take a walk. Uh. All right, Sean, we appreciate it. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much. See you.